I am Jessica Del Mar, and this channel is all about the vibrational resonance to the frequency of oneness. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. The very first thing that came through as I was sitting down for 2020 in this very first video is a story of knowledge, how creation was birthed upon this planet, the very beginning energies um, upon the creation of Gaia. And so a lot of interesting things came through and I'm excited to share it in this video series. So let's begin with part one. I'm just going to read what came through. Okay, so the very first thing that came through was basically telling me to negate everything that I thought I knew and to open the mind to possibility that extends beyond the line of sight and mind, meaning that everything that maybe I think that I know in my mind, just kind of put that to the side and be open to whatever is coming through. The information that comes through this video is from my own connection. You may resonate with it or not. Let's start at the beginning with the Big Bang, as you might call it, but really a spark that created the fire, the life force that birthed your universe. Fire is a specimen of the sun, a life-giving element of pure creation, holding both divine creation and divine destruction in its enigma. A good way to understand the universe is to understand fire. And so, our story begins with fire and the birth of life on planet Gaia. It starts with fire. With fire brought light, and all of God in your universe was born out of light. A planet is not just a planet, but a mass that is connected to other masses in your solar system. The vast and wide and deep ocean water connects lone land masses upon your planet. Space acts in the very same way, but connects planets within your solar system. And so, the fire that was sparked in the beginning was the fire that eventually created your sun. The sun is the torch of your solar system. It provides light and warmth and life. It not only opens light and warmth, but also darkness and cold. It is the energy of pure creation, and within pure creation is dark and light, a complete balance of yin and yang. And so, when the sun was created as a spark of its own greater source, the sun also sent out sparks of its own, which created the planets of your solar system. And as the spark of what would be later called Earth cooled, life was birthed on this planet and made into form nurtured by the warmth of the sun. Beneath the surface of each of these planets still exists a spark of the greater sun from which it was birthed. Fire is the spark upon which created your planet and still runs through the veins of your planet. Land is the offspring of fire as the creation birthed from the heat of the sun and the coolness of space. When the spark of the sun found its place in the solar system to call home, the spark, fire, went to work molding its shape with which it would be called Gaia. The water came from the atmosphere that was birthed from the co-creation between heat fire and the coolness of space. A sort of bubble was formed around the planet as a force between heat and cold pushing against each other. This is the atmosphere. And in the push and pull between hot and cold came perspiration and droplets of water. And so water formed upon the surface of Gaia with no open landmasses yet. The push between hot and cold not only dancing upon the atmosphere of Gaia, but now making its way down to the surface of Gaia, where the heat of the spark of the sun flowing through Gaia's veins meets the coolness of the surface water. Another recipe for beautiful co-creation and birthing of new expansion. Much like how the sun extends its fire out into the solar system to create planets through these sparks of the sun, the spark of the sun in the belly of Gaia 
set forth fire upon the surface of the planet, which co-created with the water to create gifts of land. The created land masses were at first massive, cavernous, natural tunnels, hollow and empty beneath the surface of the water. The more the fire and water co-created together, the greater the caverns below the water, and the denser the land piled on top of these caverns, eventually kissing the surface and creating land that saw the daylight of the earth's sky. The land above high water was not at first lush and green, but rocky and hot. In the fiery land above water took shape specimens of the ocean. These specimens of the ocean were created in the birthing of the water when the Earth's warm atmosphere co-created with the coolness of space. The water held the first specimens of Earth. Yes, the lush green landscapes that blossomed upon the Earth were birthed out of algae, the sun, and water. Eventually, and what we'll talk about later, is that other energy sources and beings would bring with them ways to grow the land with many other types of plants, trees, flowers, insects, and animals. But right now, we are focusing on the very beginning. So in the beginning was blue water and land that flourished with algae. In the beginning, there was no other life form on the planet besides fire, water, and algae. Algae was formed in the marriage of cool and warm in the Earth's atmosphere, which created not only water, but small organisms, which created algae. Open energy upon Gaia was that of pure creation. The gift of life is formed on the backs of pure creation, which in the eyes of Source is not a destructive thing. Against the belief that natural disasters are destructive, they are also life-giving. After a natural disaster, is always life granted a new outlook? Yes, sometimes lives are lost, but in the scheme of the balance of not only the planet, but the solar system and the universe, a greater balance is being maintained. The greatest energy is held within human forms that hold emotion and free thought. So, when energy is needed in the universe, an incarnated soul dies. Energy is infinite in the universe, but it is very much like a bank account. The energy put into the bank account comes from a greater source, and when the energy is depleted, the greater source is happy to put new funds or new energy into the bank account. However, think of each dollar in the bank account as a living soul or a living thing within the existing universe. Everything in the universe is alive, so the universe itself is the loaded bank account. Within this greater bank account, there are a few different accounts, such as a checking account, and a savings account, and a credit account. But all of these accounts are connected to the greater bank account, which is the universe. When souls incarnate into a physical experience, think of them as dollars that move out of the checking account and into the credit account. The more souls that incarnate into a physical experience, the more the checking account is depleted and the greater the weight in the credit account. However, the energy in the credit account is not pure energy, but energy mixed with the illusion of a physical experience. The savings account is like water. It holds pure energy, like light energy. The checking account is like broth. It holds energy of souls, which usually incarnate, and as a soul incarnates, it picks up sort of residue energy depending upon what type of experience that soul has had in its physical incarnated experience. So it's a little bit more of a foggier energy in the checking account than it is in the savings account. 
And then the credit account is more like a grainy split pea soup because it holds energy of souls who are incarnated. So it's souls, soul energy mixed with illusion, thoughts, emotions, etc. of the physical experience. There has to be a constant balance in the universe. And so death in the physical is simply a call from the greater source for the energy of the soul to return back to the checking account so that balance can continue to be applied to the greater universe or the greater account. Source cannot open new energy into the universe unless energy of the existing universe has been depleted. Stagnant energy means no movement, and when there is no movement, then there essentially is death. So the universe has to be in constant motion, or the universe ceases to exist. Energy is depleted from a universe when a black hole swallows it up. But a black hole is not an energy sucker, but rather an energy converter. It takes existing energy and converts it into new energy. New energy needs time to acclimate into the universe that it enters. This is why there is an importance of balancing the existing energy within a universe because the existing energy continues expanding and growing. If new energy is deposited into the bank account of the universe, then it's almost like starting from scratch rather than continuing on the momentum and the expansion of the energy that already exists within that universe. It's much like a garden that flourishes with life of its own, with flowers and plants and trees and birds and butterflies and bees and roots and insects and things that exist below the soil and surface. And then if you dig up part of that garden, then it's almost like you have to start all over again. You have to plant new seeds. And so the garden as a whole is a little bit disrupted, if you will. It's never the same as it was before you dug up part of that garden, or it takes a while to get back to where it was. And so a black hole is not a scary thing, but it's there for checks and balances. It acts as a vacuum to take out things in the universe that no longer serve a purpose, and then it converts it into new energy that will serve in stronger ways for the universe. Much like how in the example of the garden, you would dig up or take out or clean up the weeds or the dead leaves from the garden, and then convert those weeds or dead leaves into new seeds and new plants to add to the flourishing garden. Planet Gaia was seeded with life because of an influx of souls in the universal checking account desiring for a physical experience, desiring to go into the credit account. The universe was nearing stagnation before Gaia was created. The birth of Gaia and the opening of souls into the physical experience of the realm of Gaia helped to save the universe from ceasing to exist. There is a lot of energy generated from soul experiences upon Gaia, and so for this, Gaia is held in the open palm of God. With the birthing of a planet, comes portals to access other planets in other star systems within the universe. Meaning, as life flourishes upon a planet, portals are activated, energy is connected, between planets of similar energy, similar vibrational frequency. Meaning that portals are activated upon Gaia that open into planets that exist in other star systems. This is much like how people can have connections with other people of similar vibrational frequencies, but they don't need to be in the same space. They can be on opposite sides of the planet. For example, if you think of a phone, the phone is sort of like a portal that connects two people in two different spaces, or Facebook, or Instagram, or Messenger of any kind. Um, or like a FaceTime thing, 
there are these on a micro scale, these like sort of portals in a physical manifested form that connect people. And so it was showing me that there is that type of connection between planets of the universe, even though they exist in different star systems. And portals act as these sort of gateways that open up these connections between different planets. Energy bridges time and space. And so Gaia has the ability to open connection with other planets of similar vibrational frequency within her realm, within where this space and time that we're in right now. This may be a concept a bit harder to grasp, but there are portals throughout Gaia that will open you into what may feel like another time, space, dimension, world, or planet that could possibly exist in another star system. And that's where I'm going to stop this video, part one. And in the next video, we're going to continue talking about sort of this opening of the birthing of Gaia and the opening of creation upon Gaia and speaking more about these portals and, and what's going on there. We're also going to talk about the sun and the sun's role in helping to create life upon Gaia. So we're going to continue in part two in the next video. Thank you for keeping an open heart and an open mind taking what resonates with you and leaving what doesn't. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Together with you in oneness, I'm Jessica Del Mar. Oneness and love be with you.